Now, some of the most valuable traits that employers are looking for are actually not on your resume. As a matter of fact, research indicates that one of the most in-demand skills that are sought after is emotional quotient, popularly, popularly known as emotional intelligence. Now, what is it? And how can women take advantage of emotional intelligence to get ahead of themselves? We are about to find out. Welcome to Her Standards with me, Queen Tambori. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for joining us for yet another episode that is all about celebrating women and discussing issues about women objectively. Now, if you want to join us for this conversation, I am joined by an amazing panel who will be able to introduce themselves in a short while. Talk to us at KTN Home across all social media platforms. I'm also available as Quintambori on Facebook, Instagram, as well as Twitter. Do you consider yourself emotionally intelligent? Maybe you should drop us a comment on the comment section. Let us know what your opinion is on today's topic. We are at the library at the Sarit Center. Beautiful concept. Actually, you can come here, have your meeting, have your Zoom meeting, hang out with your friends, but also dedicate some time for a quiet moment at the library section and grab a book. Remember, as Kenyans, we've been accused of not reading. Now, you do not have an excuse. Please walk to the library at the Sarit Center and grab a book as well as a meal. Now, um, ladies, welcome to Her Standards. I'm joined by Mary, who is an old acquaintance. I think we met before COVID. <laughs> before COVID, we had an amazing time in Mombasa. Must have been, um, what do you call that place? The English, English, English point. point Mary, English yes. point, yes. yes we had an amazing point. time. But then COVID happened. And of course, I have just met Vicky. So, I will allow you to introduce yourself. Please use a bit of emotional intelligence. <laughs> so let's start with you, Vicky. So tell us who you are and uh, what brings you to the show today? Um, I'm Vicky Karoga, who's, uh, that's my name. Mm -hmm. And um, I am an emotional intelligence facilitator, trainer, and uh, uh, I would say practitioner. As, as we like to say with Mary, emotional intelligence is a journey that we both speak on and train on uh, a lot of the times. Um, my career has also seen me as an architect and that's where it all started. And I also run a company as the managing director called Profiles International where we, we strive to develop people and to have these conversations around people, leadership, self-leadership, self-mastery and uh, try and grow people more towards the, the more human skills that we need and because we know the technical side is almost always on yeah yeah and then the human side is forgotten sometimes yes and it's just a skill like any other that we we need to to harness we need to grow we need to learn each and every single day very well yeah a little buddy also whispered to me that you are a golfer you are a rotator <laughs> <laughs> and yes. you are a drumist uh -huh. <laughs> i do pr and communications for the rotary club of karen trying to um, get into communities and do projects like we're doing for now wash uh, we're trying to provide toilets and sanitations to um, secondary schools and primary schools, uh, government schools. Um, I, I do play golf. I wish I could play golf more often, but my goodness, <laughs> golf has its owners. <laughs> but um, the love of my life, and I always say this because it anchors me back to who I really am, is yeah. music. Oh. And uh, I think I spent the... Uh, the great, before pre-COVID, before we all shut yeah, down, yeah. in a music rock band called Mathis Claw, and uh, I played music drums. Band. Music band. Yes, That's we cool. have about three albums out. <laughs> so, <laughs> so played a bit of music, played a lot of drums, loved that. Um, I play piano, I play the flute, and uh, and I, I think I sing a lot as well. Mm. So um, I think when all is said and done, my retirement will be somewhere in like a small tavern. Mm -hmm. just Doing away tunes, mm -hmm. doing away tunes. That's that's my dream. That's the dream. Nice. Yeah. I think you're just you're just a show on your story is just a show on its <laughs> own, and maybe I know the producer is listening, and uh, we'll probably organize for something else when you're not talking about emotional intelligence. No problem. No Very problem. Very nice. Yes. But if you thought Vicky was 
you know, all mm. of that. Maybe you should meet Mary. Mary. <laughs> No, I just admire what Vicky has done. Are you Absolutely. sure? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. I admire what Mary has done. She's been a great mentor. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So to, to uh, well, yeah. Mary Mukindia, mm. uh, an emotional intelligence uh, practitioner. That's what I am today. I'm told I'm always re-engineering myself. Mm -hmm. Taught by Vicky, certified through her company because she represents a, a global brand, which is one of the top brands, Australian brand called Genos. So I'm also an ICF, International Coaching Federation Professional Coach. Yeah. So I do executive, executive leadership coaching. I'm also a trainer, leadership trainer. I work with FKE for the last five years on a Norwegian funded program where we develop women. It's actually entirely for women. To, it's actually to help get women to the boardroom. What are the things that women would need to know? Because it's a world, it's a men's world. And Vicky actually was on that program. It's called Female Future. That's how we first met. Mm. Female Future. So how do you prepare women to understand how the boardroom works and what they need to do to be at the boardroom because we have our own socialization the way we talk. So I'm a female future um, leadership trainer on one of the modules uh, called the leadership module. I'm also a board director in a number of companies. And what else? I'm a facilitator. I'm a speaker. <laughs> and then have a long past because I'm in my mid-60s. So I've, I'm told I'm continually re-engineering myself. But I just love to help develop women and help bring clarity to their big ideas. So that's what I do. Mm. Women, we have quite a lot to learn from Mary, okay? You know, the first thing that I, I, I picked uh, from my introduction is she actually learned from Vicky. She was certified from Vicky's company. That's reverse mentorship. Yeah. Yeah. The second thing that I picked from uh, Mary is actually the fact that she's in her mid-60s. Can you see how she looks? <laughs> so what, what is wrong with the rest of us? <laughs> goals. Goals, goals. Anyway. Yeah. Thank you so much for finding time to join us to have this discussion. And I love the chemistry. I mean, women, we've been accused of being our, worst, our own worst enemies. But see how we can actually uh, drink from each other and learn from each other. It's so encouraging. And I'm just honored that I'm able to host you too as we talk about also a very important topic on emotional intelligence. I always say that that is a myth perpetuated perhaps by men. Yeah. Because when they say women are our own worst enemy, we don't work together. I always say, and I say this all the time, even to my full circle uh, with Mary women, yeah. is that if you look at every, let's talk the African society, any birth will not happen without women. Mm. Who are the first people when a yeah. woman is Moshiere? You know, that's a word in Kikuni. Yeah. Every tribe has one. Yeah. The first people who come to welcome the baby are women. Yeah. Yeah. They make porridge for you, they make mm. soup yeah. for you, they're there with you. Mm. When there's a marriage, mm. who are the first people who come around mm. to sing at the gate, to refuse you to come in, mm. to have whatever? It's women who make, and they come together in the villages, they cook. They do everything for you. We get together. If you look at death, who are the people? Somebody dies. A woman just shows yeah. up, kanga, yes. with milk and yeah. sugar. Yeah. Yeah. In the just kitchen. Sort your, kitchen, yeah. they sort you out. Yeah. You don't yeah. even know what is going yeah. on. Yeah. When you look at even the cottage industries, yeah. in my, I'm from Nyeri. Yeah. It, when we brought water tanks, mm. all those were small societies of women who got yeah. together to build water tanks to do pipelines. Look at Cumberland, also the Masai same thing. Land, so women yeah. always get together. Who started Chamas? Hmm. Women. Women. Mm. Yeah. So I'm sorry. I think it's a myth perpetuated by men that we don't work together because they know when they do this very powerful in yeah. leadership positions as well. Yeah. True story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, mm. today we want to see how to help each other. I mean, we've been yeah. accused of. Uh, being overly emotional, especially when it comes to managing or taking up leadership positions. You, mm -hmm. Some women have even been asked, are you on your periods because of the way they're reacting? But maybe we need to learn or rather teach women how to deal, uh, acquire emotional intelligence because I have read somewhere that it, it, it can take them a long way in terms of mm -hmm. their leadership growth or even in the workplace. But before we get down to the discussion, this thing called quotient, because as I was researching, I realized that there's, there's actually a lot more. There is okay. intelligence quotient, there is emotional intelligence, there is um, spiritual intelligence, there's quite so many. Social intelligence. Social intelligence yeah. and many others. So which ones do you think are important for us and which ones should we develop as, as women? Vicky. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've come across a lot of... Um, intelligences yeah. and I put it in quotes because yeah. I don't think that's quite English <laughs> yeah. but uh, and um, and they've all come up I think to try and support the human being as as a human being grows like 
almost from the soul, yeah. not from. Um, we we put a lot of emphasis on my doctorate, my my mm -hmm. my this, my the other. Mm -hmm. But how then do we also tell people that there is this other side that is just equally as important? So my opinion, uh, my. My opinion, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but my considered opinion, opinion is that yes. all these things come together because we want to be able to explain things to people mm -hmm. in terms they can understand. Okay. So I don't want to just tell you you need to do this, do the other. Yeah. Do I, I want to put a word to it that you can relate to. What I have found though is um, when you embrace the tenets of emotional intelligence, yeah. and for us we talk about the Genos International Emotional Intelligence uh, Model, mm. you actually touch on so many other things. Because being emotionally intelligent means you're culturally aware, you're socially aware, you are in touch with who you are. Self-awareness is actually the gateway to emotional intelligence. That means you're aware of what your soul needs. Start being aware of your emotional cues. If you're very spiritual, you start being aware that you require that spiritual nurturement, whatever that is. If you're to be authentic with people, you in touch with your authentic self. Yeah. You're safe with the needs that you have for yourself. Yeah. And so you can allow you, Quinta, to be safe with whatever you need. I can be, I mean, I look at your red hair and I'm like, wow. <laughs> but usually, if I was another woman, I'd be like, my goodness. <laughs> and even if I don't like it, I can tell you, hey, okay, that red is a bit much for me. Yeah. But I still respect the space that we're in. Mm -hmm. So I think if you look at the competencies that really people talk about when they talk about emotional intelligence you find that you do cover quite a lot about the human aspect of interacting with people mm -hmm. yeah yeah a great, a great point you brought out there that the focus more often than not is always on the papers particularly yes. academic papers i have a degree i have a master's i have a phd i mean i've gone to school until they say we read and you study until you, you get to the sign of no school ahead. You have everything, you've bugged <laughs> everything. <laughs> so Mary, yeah. what, what is your understanding of uh, emotional intelligence? Yeah, and why I is love it important? It, yeah. yeah, it is very important. I mm. love what Vicky said. I think for me, the way I summarize it to myself and when I'm speaking to clients mm. and even people I mentor is that it's, and we are all works in progress, myself included, yeah. is that it's how I show up. Because how I show up determines how you will feel towards me. Mm -hmm. So if I show up, mm, 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 mm. body language, you know, I'm reading, you know, you are reading my body language. Yeah. And that means you will react to me in a certain way. Yeah. So like Vicky says, if I'm very self-aware of how I show up yeah. and that everybody is different, yeah. they come from different backgrounds, yeah. and that I have an empathy to, uh, to work with other people, and that I'm honest in how I deal, I'm authentic, but that authenticity is a number of behaviors. So once I realize that the way I show up in my talk, in my language, in my discussions, in hearing people's views, in the way I react or listen, then I start to understand that people react to me based on how I show up. And if I show up in a thoughtful way, in a considered way, then those people will react to me in a positive way. And if they do, then I can be able to influence them. Because now, I have made them trust me, understand me, and hear me. See, yeah, Mary listens. Mary understood what I was going on. So now they react to me in a positive way. So I can now influence you. If I can influence you, then surely I can get anything done. As a leader, I can engage you. You can be productive. Then you'll want to work with me. You'll want to participate in what I'm asking. And many people don't understand that you can be the most intelligent person. But if the way you show up to people is arrogant, is temperamental, is difficult, is yeah. disconnected. I'm yeah. talking to you, uh-huh. Mm, yeah. 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 Oh, you want to come? Oh, you're the boss, you're talking, somebody yeah. walks in, you're the yeah. computer. Yeah, talk, talk, I can hear. <laughs> do, 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 do. Then they will say, this guy doesn't even respect me. Yeah. So I think it's very important to know how we show up and to think about it. Mm. Still, studies also show that women are more emotionally intelligent than men. I don't know, maybe you, you, yeah. you are the experts, you're going to tell us. But how come I cannot marry these two? Because on one hand, we seem to be not in control of our emotions or our emotional intelligence for that matter. But on, on, this other hand, on this other hand, the statistics tell a different story. What is happening? You see, there are people who, when things are getting hot, yeah. They just excuse themselves from the room. Yeah. So you right, they're hot, they're angry. They decide this situation, mm. I need to pull myself out. Because if I stay, I'm going to react. So mm. they are now controlling 
their behavior. We have a coach friend of ours who is actually um, a general practitioner as well, Eric ba Derek Banga, yeah. who knows, about, he always says he knows my tattoos trigger him. You know the people, me, I know it's yeah. slow people, slow yes. people trigger me. They're like, surely you're, you're being so slow, bring it, I'll take it over. So I know I'll be triggered by something. So yeah. he's triggered by my tattoos, but he started to say, I need to control my behavior myself, yeah. understand where they're coming from. And now he looks at them, he just gives them space. Says, now I understand maybe they have to meet a target and so on. So I think what Vicky was saying about people who are maybe caregivers have more aware of their emotions because they take care of patients all the time. Yeah. I think it's the same for women. We've been given permission by society to be emotional because we're the naturalists. So you will find that actually many women are in nurturing positions, supportive positions, yeah. HR yeah. managers, uh, now of course even things like marketing because we tend to be authentic, we are right. Because society has allowed us, it doesn't allow men. They're supposed to bottle up to be fine even when things are terrible, you're crying, somebody's died. So they are, they've bottled themselves and put it away. And they think they're supposed to be commanding and tough because the business world has told us yeah. to be a leader, you have to be harsh mm -hmm. and whatever. Mm -hmm. But life is changing. We're having automation, as you said earlier. Yeah. Everything's automation, technology, algorithms, um, AI. So things are being done by machines. Yeah. Now this, the skills we're looking for are the softer skills, negotiating, influencing, mm. collaborating, engaging. Mm. You know, those are the skills we're looking for. So women, in fact, if you look at the journals, coaches that we have an emotional yeah. practitioners, mm. most are women. But on the other hand, because society, I think, allowed us to be so emotional, mm. we haven't had the intelligence speed to understand mm. what do you do with that emotion? You don't have to cry at every level, you don't have to <laughs> shout at every level, you don't have to be this, because you see, emotions, they determine how we feel, it's yeah. what we're feeling. Yeah. There are points of data, as Vicky keeps telling us, yeah. like don't go shopping when you're hungry, or go <laughs> to a restaurant to order food I'm when you're very angry. <laughs> yes, so, <laughs> you know, because then the data is telling you I'm hungry, then you do too much. Mm -hmm. So there are points of information, so they make us feel certain way. Okay. When we feel certain way, like you were feeling about yeah, that lady, yeah. you take a decision, I'm yeah. never coming back to this place. Place. Mm -hmm. place. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell all my friends that's a horrible shop. Mm -hmm. So you see, mm -hmm. so that information makes you make a decision, and that emotion then allows you to exhibit a, a behavior, that behavior then becomes a performance. So if employers could understand that those feelings give you decisions, those decisions make you behave in a certain way, that behavior it has an impact on performance, then people would say, oh my goodness, this is something I need to know then how to control, how to exercise restraint, how to understand, how to know which behaviors I need to do and therefore I'll get the performance I want. Not the one that was dictated by my emotions because I knew the in-between. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know how to digest that, but <laughs> I think was it too much? <laughs> no, but I think let's expound. She's very good at yes. what he's saying. Yeah, she's yeah. saying is, and, and she's put it very clearly. Mm. Emotions affect the decisions you make. Okay. Plain and simple. Mm -hmm. That's what she's saying. Mm. Emotions elicit behaviors in us, okay. and those behaviors again affect. If for you, mm -hmm. will affect how you engage back to me. So, my performance is also affected by emotions. Same thing she's saying. Because if I'm a certain type of way and I show up to you in that particular way, case in point to that shop, yeah. if you were the girl selling in that shop, how would you sell that day? Uh. How would you sell that day? <laughs> I've exhibited this behavior. Yeah. You already, the customer has walked in and made a decision. I'm not coming to this shop. Now again. you, you're the one selling in that shop. How will you sell that day? Aren't you busy calling people? <laughs> Isn't that true? Yeah. Yeah. It's as simple as that. And that's why I keep saying it starts at a very small point. Yeah. And then it just keeps going, 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 yeah. going until suddenly your shop has no customers, yeah. has no one wants to work there. <laughs> they into the organizations, guys, I mean, don't work with that boss. Mary keeps yes. saying people leave bosses. bosses yeah. they people don't, leave they don't, people. Yeah. 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 They, they don't, don't leave jobs. You know, they, they leave jobs. bosses. No, they leave people. Because you're shouting, I mean, we always have this nice quiz. Mm. We do good boss and bad boss. Mm. And we ask certain questions. Mm how did the good boss made you feel on several things and we say the bad one you should see the scores they're so different and when you say how did this good boss make you feel yeah. people say valued respected i felt intelligent i felt mm -hmm. you know how do you feel intelligent yeah. Is it possible to feel intelligent? yeah and then we ask them you know on a scale of one to ten yeah. one two three i was just there for the paycheck yeah. eight nine ten i could go through a brick wall for this boss for this boss yeah. the good boss they tell you ten 
The boss asked me to work overtime to do this. We give, and we've even seen productivity improves highly. The average people productive, global analysis show the average person is probably 30% productive, average, because they have the high performers and the low performers. But imagine how you could improve you know, productivity at your business, at your company, in your home with your children, in the way they relate, when you exhibit the right behaviors. So it's just amazing what people, you know bosses that you've left. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you know bosses that you say, if he calls me, I'll come, I'll just work. It's because yeah. of them. Let me even give you another fun uh -huh. fact. Uh -huh. uh, when we were doing that, that facilitation about stress. Yes. Yeah. So I went in to read about uh, yeah. stress. Yeah. And they say stress lowers your IQ. It's an uber fact, uh -huh. a true fact. Uh -huh. So when you do the, the, the IQ tests, if you've been going under chronic stress, and I don't mean the stress of it, I'm coming for this show, so that's good stress. Yeah. But there's the stress of being shouted at yeah. every single yeah. day. Yeah. The decisions you make detriment. They keep becoming worse and worse and worse. Yeah. It actually affects your IQ. Oh my God! We say IQ gets. We say IQ gets you hired. EQ gets you promoted. IQ gets you hired. EQ gets you promoted. Mm -hmm. To the corner office. You know. <laughs> to that corner office. And yeah, and I think that was. That's the point where we started this conversation. We say that employers are not even looking for what is on the resume. They're looking for people who can fix. Uh, you know, situations in yeah. the office, fixers, people who are open-minded, mm. solution providers. Yes, who can engage staff, who can yeah. motivate staff, who can get staff to do extraordinary things. Yeah. Like now, we, you know, the conference we yeah. had, yeah. Um, you know, Vicky said, Friday, everybody will go off yeah. because we'll all sleep because they've been working so hard. So it's understanding that people are people. At the end of the day, there's yeah. just human energy, the same as yourself. Mm. And many bosses don't seem to understand that, many leaders. But it's for everybody to have EQ, but yeah. particularly people who are leading others. They need to. So important. Very important. Mm. EQ and people skills, is it more or less the same thing? I think it's it's more or less the same thing. And yeah. like I was sharing yeah. earlier, and, and I think what a webinar where someone said, it's been called many things. Mm. I think mm. the differentiating factor for me has mm. been that now EQ gave a reason. Before we were told, mm. be nice. Mm. No, be, be patient. But then you're not understanding why am why I not am I patient? Nice? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I really want to be patient. Yeah. Like you're saying, slow people. I really want to understand this slow. But because I'm not understanding internally what is actually happening yeah. to me that allows me that patience goes out the window. Shua, yeah. The minute this person shows up, because I'm not really getting to 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 that kind of depth of knowledge. Yeah. Um, I am not really solving the problem. I'm putting a bandage and saying, I'm going to try and be patient, be patient. <laughs> but I'm not interrogating. So I think yeah. um, that's where I would differentiate okay. um, more yeah. EI. Um, yeah, I don't know what you'd no, like to No, I was add. just thinking about how we used to be told, be nice to Wageni, yeah. you know, greet yeah. them nicely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, when I was young in my career, tough, you know, professional lady, cack, cack, cack. I used to say, why do you have to greet people? <laughs> I used to tell people, greet me after nine o'clock. I need time to thaw. Let me sit in my office and have my coffee. Nowadays, I really love to greet people because I understand that I'm making them comfortable. I'm telling them, I see you. Okay. Yeah. How are you? How, yeah. How's your family? Yeah. You know, somebody was sick. Yeah. That is such an important part yeah. of interacting with people. They're not machines. Yeah. But for me, it was like, what, did you do your work? Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah. You had 24 hours in a day. Is that OK if you, yeah. you went yeah. home? I want to know, is it done? Yes. But when you actually see things from people's view as well and understand them as people, you get further along. But I had to learn that many years later. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Maybe many I can also later. talk about something you mentioned yeah. at the yeah. beginning of the show. Yeah. You said um, women are seen as emotional features. Mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. you, oh, mm -hmm. Are you on your period? Yes. yes. And but, uh, another part of uh, emotional intelligence, um, even after we start discovering what the impact we're having. Yeah is also understanding then how to manage because you have to be able to express your emotions yeah. effectively yes as we say you have to learn to be angry mm -hmm. with the right person to the right degree at the right time maybe you can say that again <laughs> <laughs> and something one of the coaches we work yeah. with uh, really, yeah. really talks about you have to you know you, you can be angry with almost it's like Patrick Lumumba you, you, you have a <laughs> a mosquito. Yeah. And what, what, are, what are the what, effects, yeah, what, what are the consequences yeah. uh, of that? Yeah. And getting into situations where you do more harm than actually any good. And if we're to look at the bigger picture, 
I love the Sunny Bindra's book. Yes. Which one? The Peculiar says, Kenyan? No, oh, the other one. Yeah. Where he says, you're a speck. Mm -hmm. Upon a speck. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Upon a speck. You're nothing. Mm -hmm. You're zero. Yeah. In the bigger scheme of things, yeah. you're, you're very tiny. A on you're a speck. Spike on a spike on a spike on a spike. So even if you told Kifua forever for yeah. everyone, for but you're still nothing. <laughs> Honestly, at the end of the day, so what is the bigger picture? Where are you going to? Mm -hmm. What do you want to do? Mm -hmm. How is that helping you? Mm -hmm. So even as women, yeah. understanding how to effect, and the word is effective, Effect effective. effectively express, express our emotions okay. is a very, 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 very important. Key. I think that's yeah. a good point to take a break. <laughs> if you're just joining her standards, today we are having quite an amazing show. We are being taught. Everybody is in school, including the host. We are talking about emotional intelligence. How emotionally intelligent are you based on the discussions are you able to gauge yourself on a, say on a scale of one to ten where do you fall now uh, we want to take a, just a short break because we, this, the, the, the show is just getting started we want to get into real life scenarios we had so many of you sending us questions on some of the difficult scenarios and dilemmas you have had to deal with at your respective workplaces don't go away we will be right back we also want to know how people who are emotionally intelligent behave, and even those who are low on emotional intelligence, what are some of their character traits? Remember, we are available at KTN Home across all platforms, or you can also hit me up directly at Queen Tambori on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Our beautiful location is the library at Surrey Center. We will be right back. Welcome back to Her Standards with me, Quinta Mbori. Thank you for joining us for the second part of this discussion. We are becoming emotionally intelligent and at the end of this show, I believe that we'll be totally different people. I am joined by an amazing panel. We are talking about emotional intelligence and how women can take advantage of this very important life skill to get ahead of themselves, especially in the work environment special shout out to our host we are at the library at the sarit center wonderful place come here grab a book grab a drink have a good time you'll not regret it now ladies welcome back now before we took a break we we, we, we stopped at a very important point we say mary you said people run away don't run away from bad organi from organizations they run away from bad bosses yes. so one of the questions that came through actually is uh, touching on this person called them non-productive bosses. But we can define non-productive boss in so many ways. The, the ones who shout at you along the corridors, the ones who embarrass you in front of your juniors, uh, the ones who have also been tagged as lazy, they are not performing. How? You know very well that you are a good employee, you meet your goals, you meet your KPIs, you come to work, you give your the organization all the hours that you've signed up for in the contract, yet there is this person who is your supervisor, who is, you feel like they're not meeting their end of the bargain. How do you deal with them, bearing in mind, we, today we are talking about emotional intelligence, without uh, probably being rude or without being uh, not professional? How? <laughs> okay, Vicky. <laughs> Mary is looking at you. I'm looking at Vicky. Or, 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 I have my answer somewhere quick, but uh, I also want her to give her to give us that wonderful, considered answer, and I'll give from my experience as well. Very nice, Vicky. Mm -hmm. Maybe first thing, tell us: Do do bad bosses exist? Oh, they start do. from there. Oh, they do. Yes. Oh, they do. <laughs> and they are bad in in. I don't want to say they are bad, unproductive, uh -huh. as you put it in the first in the first uh, uh, sentence. Yeah both temperamental and non-temperamental because you could have a boss that yells at you you could also have a boss that never promotes you i think they don't say anything but they don't promote Silent you treatment. they don't they don't they don't tell you good job you could have another boss who never develops you there are so many types of bosses that we live in for for different reasons so all unproductive in terms of our 
I mean, the way that, that they're showing up to us. Yeah. So I think what you were talking about is the one who's temperamental or whose mood just affects every yes. single one. You see him and you, you, know, you, 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 you go the opposite direction. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And you yourself managing yourself because you know you don't want to feel a particular kind of way. Yes, please. So we call that um, in emotional intelligence, self-management. Self okay. So that's someone who hasn't really learned how to manage themselves. So, and remember when I started, I said, yes, it is good to be self-aware. You no, know, like Mary was sharing at, by nine o'clock, don't talk to me. After. So, <laughs> she was very self-aware, but she did not understand, as I said, the impact she was having on the other people. Yeah. So self-management means that because you have made that intention that you want to be more, uh, uh, you want to show up more productively with other people, yeah. then you're going to try and show up more often than not in man in ways that allow you to engage back so for example when i know i'm about to yell mm -hmm. i'll probably just say i want just please just give me space give me space please please because the words or i get myself out of a conversation mm -hmm. or i could it could be as much as understanding what are the things and i like talking about this because they're taken for granted mm -hmm. but there are small things that we can do each and every single day that better our well-being yeah. things such as sleep you know, people think sleep is, is, is that just another thing yeah. at you, I slept for three hours and yeah. I'm proud of it. Something as little as sleep can affect how you show up to someone else. I could be blow up because uh, my emotions are overtaken because I don't have the immunity, so to speak, that is given by being relaxed and being calm and being, and being rested. Sleep is one of them. Diet is one of them. Drinking too much is another one. So all these things um, that we need to look at when we're talking about how do we self-manage ourselves. So if you have a boss <laughs> who's temperamental, I think, yeah. um, <clears throat> one of the things is, again, now that you're aware of how you react to him, you also have to be aware of how that reaction is also aiding in his behavior or her behavior. Because when you run away, you're not giving feedback. So maybe you need to go and look for a, a mentor or a coach or a course in how do I give effective feedback? Or how am I going to start showing up to this boss in ways that will make them warm up to me? People love being appreciated. People love being mm. told you've made something if, if different in my life or, or whatever it is. Or uh, I really need your, your expert opinion because I, I know you're the person who can really help me do this. Not just, please give me your comments and they're given back. So those small, small things done consistently over time, they also alter the mood of other people towards you. And I think that's what EI is, being able to influence other people as well into more productive states. You know, what, yeah. I, what, I, what I'm picking from Vic, what Vic is saying is when you're dealing with a bad boss, then it is important for you to learn how to, first of all, be self-aware, but also you need to master, you need to master their behavior such like that you know how to react better to, to them. More effective. And one, one way of doing that is by you can seek, look for feedback. You don't have to wait for them to get to the point where they are, exactly. they are flaring up. You exactly. can just walk in and ask, how am I doing? What, yes. what do you think I need to change about my performance? Yes. Or are you able to help me you know, improve this aspect of my work? Exactly. So when you start engaging in that way, then chances are they might actually give yeah. you, react better towards you. They feel valued. Oh. genuinely valued absolutely. what do you think yeah, absolutely okay. i was gonna say the same thing okay. i think many times particularly okay. in what i've seen in working in africa because yeah. i've also worked abroad is that i think we're such a conscious sense society yeah. and about the chief the big boss being patriotical mm -hmm. that we don't think we have responsibility in relationships that are equal okay. uh, even women in relationships as well part yeah. of the problem yeah. i think Emotional intelligence is also having difficult and challenging conversations. So you're a part of that. I'm, you should respect me as an employee. You should not shout at me. So how do you react to the boss? Is in that time, don't raise it when he's angry because now you are aware he's in an angry. But when he goes down, you can say, I need to see you for five minutes. Are you sure? And then you say, when you shout at me, I feel. It's me. I feel. Not you shout. You say, when you shout at me, I feel disrespected, I feel discouraged, I feel demotivated. I wonder how I could, you know, you could help me work better because this makes me feel this and this way. So you're giving them feedback and they'll be quite startled. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who had a very, you know, she, she's it's an international job, she's in Kenya for some time, but she's Kenyan and she had this um, 
foreign boss who was very temperamental, very difficult. And we chatted about her having a difficult and challenging conversation to tell her how she makes her feel. And we had a conversation. Now she knows this person, I will not shout at. Because that boss, you will check, there are people they shout at and there are people they don't shout at. So don't take it. Have your own boundaries of how you want to be treated in a very respectful way. If you know it's not bad way in the mornings, like my employees never used to come in before nine because they know Mary will shout. I'm much better now. Yeah. So it is important that you, you take equal relation, you know, control of that relationship. Mm -hmm. It's really important. Yeah. yeah. So you also, you also make sure you're not taking advantage of yes. you treat it respectfully exactly. because it is your right. Mary, I think when we met in English Point Marina, yes. I'm just moving on to the next question because yes. the time is not on our side. You have also been part and parcel of, you serve on several boards. One thing that comes up, especially for women on boards or women who are aspiring to be on boards, is that little matter of serving tea. <laughs> yeah. How do we use emotional intelligence when we are asked, we are all of the same level, you're probably board members, and then there's that little matter of serving tea, and you're the only lady, and everyone expects you to be the one performing that task. Honestly, I have a very strange answer. <laughs> because when I was in National Oil, when I was a CEO, a managing director and CEO, I used to serve tea. But that was deliberate because as aware, I come out very aggressive, very strong the way we were brought up. I was also probably the most competent technically in terms of the subject other than two the directors who had been one in Shell and one in Caltex. And I, I, I have a persuasive discussion. Okay. So, and a lot of the things were very new to these people. So I needed to let them know that I'm not lording it over them. Mm. So every time I would first of all deliberately call them, Mr. Director. They said, no, call me John. No, 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 mm -hmm. Mr. Director, sir. Mm -hmm. I used it because I know I want to show you that I respect you. And every time we used to have a trolley with tea, and every time tea would run out, I'll be the one to say, can I put you another? No, 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 Mary, Mary. But it was a deliberate, because you know when you're too aggressive, then people want to react, let me show her, I also know. So they'll vote your decisions down. <coughs> so me, I would say it's very too contextual. If they're asking you to serve tea because you're the woman on the board, Say, wow, I would love a cup of tea too, John. Why don't you serve us all and laugh? Ha, ha, ha. You say, let's practice. I'm sure at home even, you know, uh, I, I'm going to be your second wife today. Hey, ha, ha, ha. My husband will not be happy with me being your second wife. Yeah. You're using humor. Mm -hmm. On boards as you go higher, mm -hmm. you need different tools. So I use humor a lot because I learned men use humor. Mm -hmm. You see the way men yes. rib each other. Yes. So if they ask you because you're a director, mm -hmm. I mean, you're a woman, yeah. say, say no. But if it's something that you think genuinely you happen to be there, at yeah. the tea and serving yeah. so you say okay now it's my turn when next it will be you so they realize uh, you're not crossing boundaries but that's a really good question and I don't think they should women should serve tea simply because you're the woman mm -hmm. or take notes and so and so family meeting yeah. or somewhere take yes, notes you're, you're, the you're, woman. you're the secretary no no yeah. no, no, no. Exactly. <laughs> that comes up no, a lot no, no. you should establish boundaries yeah. but if it's a good thing to do and it will win you influence in the relationship it will be a favor is useful by the way taking minutes is a very strong position yes it is you're in control mm -hmm. so sometimes i tell people take that control because i'm the one documenting i'm the one who knows what's going on yeah. i guess we just have to use those scenarios to our advantage exactly. i want to ask you another question uh, mm -hmm. vicky so something came up about uh, it's called mansplaining or men explaining your point better than you or they think that they can do it better so you're in, in you're in a meeting and then uh, this gentleman keeps interrupting you okay and it has come up in many conversations recently we had it in our women's network uh, there's a lady who was asking how do we deal with this people who keep interrupting us <laughs> excuse me <laughs> yes uh -huh. with you um i let's Mary Ann, because I'm sure she encounters it a lot more than I do. I think I always come across as, or rather, I, 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 I get invited okay. to forums. Okay, Mary, over to yeah. you. I, I just want to just give one little thing. Yeah. I think, mm -hmm. um, like she was saying, mm -hmm. you cannot react. You, you, and immediately you notice in your body that you're reacting. You're already yeah. losing the battle. You mm -hmm. cannot react. So it can't be that you came to that meeting and you're reacting. I have to have thought it before. How am I going to play this scenario out? Men do it all the time. Yes, I, do. I see my dad practicing his speech. <laughs> in, like he would walk across and he's talking to one particular person that he's going to address. And maybe the meeting's up. But we don't do it. Mm. By the time I'm there, I have my diapers, my what, yeah. my handbag. I mean, I've not even thought about how that meeting is going to play out. You're not prepared. Mm -hmm. You're not even prepared for that particular incident. 
that you are finding very frustrated. Okay. But I'll give it to All you. Right. No, I think that's an excellent question about mansplaining, and there are several things. Is to understand that it happens, mm. and it will continue to happen. And as Vicky is saying, you have to think through about it. What do I need to do about this person who's continually doing it, you know? Um, and like I said, I like to use humor. Or sometimes you can be quite serious and put a boundary. So if somebody keeps interrupting and whatever, you can say, uh, excuse me, John, I love the way you summarize my points for me. <laughs> but I think I do, I do have a certain context that I want to put across that I understand very well because of my experience or whatever it is. And then say, would you let me explain my points? Yes. You see, now you put him in their place very well. Because what we try and do is ignore it. And oh, then fume, oh, fume. inside. Mm. Actually fume. Yeah. Fume. Yes. And then explode. Then explode. Which and John is, is not people. there. John Which is ineffective. Gone. So it's really important to say, John, you have a good knack of taking my points and explaining them very well. But I had a certain context as a woman or as a chairman of that committee or as an engineer or a lawyer. Would you let me finish, please? Mm. I've been very polite, yeah. but I've recognized what you're doing. Yeah. And I'm telling you, let me talk. And hopefully I'll put you in your place. And I hopefully I'll put If you've got a good chairman, they'll say yes. They will not do it again. I say, John, three times I've tried to speak today and I noticed that you had an excellent point. Perhaps if I finish, then you could contribute even better when I finish the whole sentence. You see? I think I have also found myself saying <laughs> that, uh, um, okay, but that's actually not what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and that's that, oh, so what were you saying? And then like, yeah, so what I wanted to say was, and now that is the end, finished. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. also that's another way. Yeah. But you can't do it, as I said, if you're reacting. Don't react. Don't react. If you find yourself in that situation and you can find yourself boiling, teach yourself that this is not the place. The outcome of this is not going to be what I want. I'm going to end up being emotional on my periods and all those things. Yeah. But as I know that it's going to be another, as you said, it's going to keep happening. I need to find an effective way to deal with it. And so give yourself that space to talk to someone to marry. This has been happening. How can I deal with it effectively? And sometimes just go and have a difficult conversation. If it's a colleague, yeah. we're saying emotional intelligence is not pampering people. Yeah. No, yeah. no. Yeah. it is yeah. about deliberately saying, I'd like to talk to John. You say, John, I've noticed in several meetings, whenever we talk, mm -hmm. you interrupt me. Perhaps you don't realize it, but I feel disrespected. I feel like I don't know what I'm talking about. I feel, I feel, I would like to request yeah. you, how do we solve this? And I'm happy to hear, you know, whatever. And you'll be quite surprised somebody's walked in. Because mm -hmm. very few of us give feedback. Yeah. Actually, many of us think, oh, her dress, all this, and we she don't give know. feedback. Oh, your hair, this. People don't give feedback. They say, oh, it looks nice. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We need to give people feedback. Somebody who gives you feedback actually wants you to grow, mm. okay. wants to develop you. Because if I keep quiet and I can see the way you're reacting or the way you're dressed or the yeah. way you have handled matters, yeah. how will I do better? Yeah. And that's why in emotional intelligence, we do have an assessment. Like during this conference, we gave everybody who registered a free assessment. It's a leadership skill. How do I fare in my behavior on these six areas? Self-awareness, awareness of others, authenticity, mm -hmm. uh, emotional reasoning, which we call self-management, inspiring performance, and so on. Mm -hmm. And then there's a productive state and the unproductive. So we have seven behaviors in each. People mark, is she on time? Does she do what she says? Mm -hmm. You know, walking the talk. Is she this? Is there appreciation of others? So people who either report to you, yeah. mm -hmm. people who are your peers and your boss, they fill that in as many as possible. Anonymously, it's done through computer. Then you get your own leadership report mm -hmm. and you're able to see how do I show up in all these areas and yeah. these behaviors and then I can now improve. Mm -hmm. Because my job is to get people to work and be productive. Mm -hmm. How do I get them to do that? Mm -hmm. This is a skill that helps you get people productive. So that boss should take that assessment then all of you who report to him, <laughs> give him feedback. Give, give him feedback. feedback. Yes, yes, give him feedback. And many companies are doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's objective. And, yeah. and it's given, it's, it, you know, another thing about feedback is it's not going to be given tainted by the personality yeah. you're speaking yeah. to. It's, it's on a piece of paper. It's in colors. Mm. So there's no feelings attached here. Yeah, no, no, no hard feelings. No hard feelings. No, 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 business. Okay. Now, <clears throat> how do we ensure that that thin, fine gray line between emotional intelligence and being nice. Mm. How do we navigate it? Do I just be nice? Do I allow people to just walk 
all over me because I am emotionally intelligent or is there a point where I say no 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 this is the boundary you're crossing it and I will not allow you <laughs> Vicky <laughs> um, first and foremost being emotionally intelligent is a very intelligent thing to do very intelligent mm -hmm. first mm -hmm. yeah. and second of all second point is emotional intelligence is not equal to being nice it is in all aspects not it is equal to um, being able to engage with people in whatever it is that you're doing whether it's your husband whether yeah. it's your children yeah. more effectively so you want to be able to address the problems that you're seeing with your child in a more effective manner a very simple way of doing that is when your child is starts throwing a tantrum mm -hmm. most mothers go to your room bah! so you're both angry that is not effective it's not effective there are, you can punish the child yes but that's not the time to start telling them yeah like this eh! it doesn't go in it just it's a wall and then to, cut, to 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 make matters worse you don't go back and now sit down with the child and say okay you know even me i was angry because you can do that as well. You, you can sit with the child and say, I, 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 I overreacted as well, because you don't want the child to learn that. Yeah. So it's about being effective about these relationships that you're having, uh, being effective with the work that you're doing with people, whether it's a husband or their wife or the colleague or the boss. Yeah. That's what emotional intelligence is. Maybe I'll let... No, I, I fully agree. Mm -hmm. And I've just thought mm -hmm. another one. When, when you know, couples fight exactly what yeah. you say, yeah. Yeah. one shuts down. Yeah and says, okay, let him do what he wants. Yeah. That's not emotional intelligence, because you're not being effective in taking the relationship further. Yeah. Emotional intelligence means that I'll wait and you cool down, when I cool down, and I'll say, yeah. let's have this discussion. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate this and this of you, however, this and this is that. So really, the information is data. I'm angry about that issue, I'm not happy about that issue, now the next step, what do I do? Instead of just behaving without the bit in between, mm -hmm. so that I can make a decision that will lead to better performance, performance of my relationship, performance yeah. in the child. Imagine the role modeling that mother gives to the child. When the child is angry, I shout back. Yeah. <laughs> so you're teaching the child it's okay to be angry to shout at people. So mm -hmm. you go and demonstrate that in school. Mm -hmm. yeah. So really, that is the crux of it. You know, yeah. Vicky explained very well. Maybe I can just go back to research. Yeah. Research looked at people who were found to be effective, not only in their workplaces, yes. but in their families, mm -hmm. in the way that they raise their children, in life in general, and wondered what were they doing different. Yeah. And I find the reasons why self-awareness is the gateway into emotional intelligence. Sometimes when I speak to young women, they don't even know whether they want to be married or not. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're in this relationship, yourself you're in limbo, because you don't even know whether you want to stay what married you or want. not. You don't know what you want. The minute you know that I'm in this marriage for life, the way that you engage back to that person changes. Yeah. And you realize the conversations that you need to have with this person need to foster a relationship, not break it. But you first have to know that you want to stay married. You need to know what you want. Yes. And the same could apply even uh, on the work yeah. front. You need to know whether you want to keep that job. Yes. And you need to know where you want to go. Next. So you need to know, I need this job. I need this two, three years. I need the experience that I'm getting here. And I'm going to make my boss my ally in getting this. Yeah, I need this relationship to work yes, because it exactly. needs to get me the from point The conversation becomes point very simple. But now if you're just there, you, the emotions have been so much, you're back saying, I don't care for this job. In the back of your mind, you know where you came, you've forgotten your why, ah, everything. Mm -hmm. Done. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, also the boss needs yeah. to understand what is my job? Is the performance yeah. of your department or your organization. How do you get the performance out of people? is to make sure that those people are motivated, they are pro they're engaged, yeah. and really productive. And that's the things that lead to productivity is being engaged and being motivated by being valued, by feeling appreciated, by being heard, and those are all the things you skill. It's, it's actually very self-serving. Mm -hmm. If I am going to get these people motivated, then they produce for me, I can go play golf. And actually you get... Uh, yes, because the employees are the fully engaged, feedback. they're motivated yeah. to you. Yeah. But if you don't exhibit them, then you'll be there till six. They all, they all say, by seven o'clock, you're still doing your work. Because people are really not engaged. They're on Facebook. And they're looking for better ways yeah. to do the work. They're actually yeah. giving you ideas. And looking for jobs elsewhere. Work. Yes. <laughs> that is a thing. Googling. We, I think we have to... Imagine we have to wind up this conversation. I feel like... <laughs> 
I feel like we, we also feel the same. No, you were yeah. you're yeah. and you were very sharp and asking us the real <laughs> issues. Thank you so much. Yeah, I really appreciate that you're able to come here and break it down for us. We, mm -hmm. As we wind up, just one habit that <clears throat> people who have low EQ prohibit. I mean, uh, exhibit also be key. Just one habit that maybe we need to stop mm -hmm. doing. What is this one thing that we do that shows that we are so we are doing so poorly in terms of our, 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 our other levels mm -hmm. of our EQ? I would sit and I'll leave it to Vicky to wrap up. Okay. She's a guru. But for mm -hmm. me, mm -hmm. and it also comes from coaching, is listening. Okay. You know, and, and it's just not listening. Listening is is listening, you know, actively listening, which means it's your body. Because people give you so much information. Words are only 7%. 38% is tone. 55% yeah. is the body language. So listening and listening attentive, you know, actively to me is one of the key. Vicky? Actually, I'm going to latch on yeah. that same yeah. habit yeah. And, and talk about now practically yeah. how that plays out. Mm -hmm. And one of the habits I find people exhibit that I think for me is 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 could be could be uh, change and hands. Uh huh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> mm. 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 By the way, by the way, uh, you remember we don't listen, listen, and so we disengage with people. And I, was, I ran uh, webinars for parents yeah. uh, and their children. They tell me, how do we stop our children from being on phones? <laughs> and they're like this on WhatsApp. <laughs> Pay attention. I remember someone to saying this about Barack Obama. And it's the only thing I ever remember about Barack Obama. When you're in the room with Barack Obama, yeah. you felt like there was no one else because he paid attention to you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good point to end. Pay attention, listen, and listen actively. Well, this has been Her Standards with me, Quinton Bori. Thank you. Thank you so much for your company. We have been talking about emotional intelligence. I was joined by the gurus, the EQ gurus in, the, in this country, Apek Nabo, Mary Mukindia, Vicky here. They're all very amazing women and experts at the field of EQ. They're available on social media platforms. Unfortunately, they didn't give us their handles. Maybe you can Vicky do a Karoga, quick one. Yes. You can search for Vicky Karoga, yeah. Twitter, Instagram, um, and LinkedIn. Facebook, not so much. Okay. Um, and the company is Profiles International. Profiles so International. also at Profiles International Instagram, at Profiles International Facebook, at Profiles International yeah. on uh, LinkedIn. And for me, Mary Mukindia, at Mary Mukindia, without the apostrophe, mm -hmm. uh, two double M's, then UK India, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Thank you so much for Thank having us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Like to invite them to follow us because we also yes. run webinars okay. which are free for okay. everyone yes. just on EI, how to grow your EI and mm. yeah, they're very beneficial. Well, life is always full of lessons and this is definitely <laughs> one of them and you need to take up this conversation uh, from our social media platforms to theirs. Keep learning. We want to ensure that we are all emotionally intelligent so that we can get ahead of ourselves as women. Unfortunately, we have to end. You know, I always hate this part of the show where we have to say goodbye to you, but on a separate note, thank you so much. Now, if you think there's a discussion we need to have, especially one that is going to empower our women, you know what to do. Talk to us at KTN Home on all our social media platforms, or you can also engage me at Quinton Bory on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, from us here at KTN Home, it's bye-bye for now. But remember to always keep your head, your heels, and your standards high. Bye for now. <laughs> <laughs>